The final method that we are going to comment on is the use of documentary sources. And uh, this is not covered much in Cresswell, so we have included a chapter by Greed and Thorogood on using documentary sources, and that is chapter 7 of their book, which you find in your readings. Now, we have been through in-depth interviews, focus group discussions, observation, participant observation, and the final one is document review. It's not always possible or necessary to collect primary data. Using documents can be a very good strategy. Documents refer to a wide range of written resources, uh, written sources, and uh, it can be artifacts, facts that can be treated as documents, such as photos or video recordings or the like. But all research relies on some analysis of documentary sources. We have to review existing research in the field, whatever our study subject is. This is a compulsory thing that we do, for our background at least. And we are reading policy reports to argue for the relevance of the research, and this is very important in global health. And uh, we're using a variety of documents for situating our research in a national context and the study setting and so on. But um, many research questions can be addressed using only existing sources of data as well. And um, why should we do that? Why should we use only existing sources? Yeah, because there's such a, a lot of data available, and especially uh, on the internet. Uh, sometimes documents are the only source of data. And it can have practical advantages and, of course, cost. It can be practical to do a desk study rather than going out in the field and collect data. And it can be much cheaper. And the documents can be analyzed qualitatively, for instance, in a social constructivist framework and using discourse analysis. But there are, of course, many other methods as well to analyze documents. What kind of written sources do we have? Yes, we have research publications, which we use regularly. And we have secondary analysis of research data, which is also very common. We have public documents of various kinds. It can be newspaper articles, it can be mass media outputs of various kinds, it can be minutes from meetings, reports, public records, it can be hospital records, the patient files, it can be private documents as well like diaries, letters, emails, and it can be social media outputs, blogs, Facebook, and so on and so forth. And there are some methodological issues involved. Um, the researcher is limited to what is available. He cannot go out and supply with with uh, his own research. The data has been collected for a particular purpose, which may be slightly different from the purpose that you're using the data for. And the researcher has no control over how the data were collected. And this is, of course, a big methodological issue, that you cannot really say much about the validity of the data that were collected. You have to to trust the arguments and the documentation of the person who did, or the team who did the primary research. Finally, <clears throat> as an example of the use of documentary resources, I would recommend you to read the case in Chapter 7 of Thorogood and Green's book on the social construction of sudden infant death syndrome on pages 177 and 178. It's a study done by Armstrong which traces how deaths of infants have been classified and reported in official reports from 1877 onwards. It's just an example of how such a 
how documentary resources can be used exclusively and make up a very interesting and important study.